Hello everyone, I'm The Enforcer and welcome to the breaking news. Please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe and support us on Patreon, link in the description below. Today's breaking news is that Ukrainian forces have ended up striking and destroying the major oil depot at the port of Taman, just south of the Kerch Strait. We were able to get this news just minutes ago as a Ukrainian drone was filmed slamming into the side of the Taman oil depot in this clip and causing severe fires from the oil catching on fire. We can hear air defense firing up into the sky. And we can now see the drone here. We see it flying into the Taman oil refinery. And diving. And we can now hear the explosion as it hits an oil silo. And we can see the smoke beginning to rise as the fire begins to break out on that oil silo, knocking out the Taman oil depot. The Taman oil depot is actually directly inside of the area of the Kerch air defense perimeter, which is something very interesting to note. And I will show you all the oil refinery right here. These are the oil silos. They all saw stricken on camera just a moment ago. And we believe that the footage was filmed from somewhere around this area near these buildings over here on this side of the facility. That's where we're believing at the moment. So it appears that the drone flew over from east to west into the refinery. Well, not the refinery, but the depot area striking into one of the silos and catching it on fire, possibly knocking out the entire relay system that exists at the Taman Oil Depot. Once again, however, this is within the Kerch area air defense perimeter or more so the Kerch Bridge air defense perimeter. And we are starting to see that this air defense perimeter is practically non-existent from Ukrainian attacks that have happened just minutes ago and from Ukrainian attacks that happened hours ago inside of the city of Kerch, which we've been able to get a shocking bit of news on and a lot more information than we thought we would be able to in such a short amount of time. We were able to get information that a railroad ferry, according to satellite picture, has been damaged from the strike. We believe that this may have been a direct attack and strike on the ferry as the the hole in the top of the vessel seems to be quite large, and this top of the vessel has to be able to support entire multiple hundreds if not thousands of tons of railroad cars in a single instance. This means that Natankums did directly hit this ferry and that this ferry is now sitting here and is pretty much stuck at its moorings at the railroad bridge area within the port of Kerch. Not only that, but we also got some very shocking information overnight that apparently it's not the only one. According to Schizo Intel on Twitter, multiple ferries have been knocked out. Russia has lost two of its three rail ferries in the Black Sea. And we were able to see that multiple vessels have been uh, have been damaged. Several crew members on each have been uh, injured, except for one, the Anekov, which was uh, in the third photo here, has been completely undamaged. But the other two, um, this vessel, the Avangard, and also the Conroe Trader right here, both of these ferries have been damaged to the point that they may be removed from service and uh, have a repairs effect on them, possibly in the port of Novorossiysk or another port somewhere in the Russian Federation. These ferries were used as a critical supply link for the Russian Federation to be able to move its military equipment from one side of the strait to the other, as the Russian Federation has pretty much stopped using the Crimean Bridge altogether as some kind of a supply corridor to move their supplies into the area of Crimea. Going off of this, we would understand that the impact that this will have not only on local logistics, but on military logistics, is going to be incredibly large, as ferry crossings are now going to be, uh, be cut by two-thirds on a daily basis, meaning that only one-third of the supplies that would have originally crossed the strait will now be crossing at any given moment, meaning that the supply rate of the forces inside of Crimea has been heavily reduced, and they will be having to work with far less supplies, or they will be cut off from supplies entirely and have to live off the land, quote-unquote, in any way that they can. This poses the Russians with an extremely difficult situation. They can either allow for these supply uh, situations to grow and become even worse as time goes by, 
or they can begin to move their forces back towards the Crimean Bridge and use the Crimean Bridge as the supply link again. Although we can see that Ukrainian drones are easily making it past the Crimean Bridge and to the area of the Taman Oil Depot, and they're also now easily striking Russian forces within the area of the Kerch port, this seems to be something that I would not have a lot of hope for in the future in saying that the Russians will be able to have a, a, a fairly sufficient supply in this area constantly flowing through as the Ukrainians' next target will most likely be the Kerch Bridge and they will have practically knocked out all available supply routes over the Kerch Strait and not only that, knocked out the oil depot just to the south of the Kerch Strait as well. All of this is once again showing that the Russians are in a very bad strait, considering that this is one of the most heavily defended areas in the in the war currently on the Russian side, with the air defense perimeter here to believed to be incredibly large. It is very shocking to see that the Ukrainians were not only able to knock out the ferries at Kerch, but they were also able to hit and damage the oil depot in the area of Taman. Moving on from this breaking news around the Kerch Bridge, we have been able to hear that in Sevastopol, Ukrainian kamikaze boats have been able to knock out a couple of Russian Coast Guard boats within the area. This is some very interesting footage as we rarely ever get to see Ukrainian kamikaze attacks anymore, but we can see the drone trying to make its way into the port, being raked by rocket fire from Russian helicopters like we see right there, and the helicopters appear to be missing for the most part, getting really close, but no cigar. We can now see that the drones are watching the Russian helicopters on infrared camera. And that appears to be an MI-8. We can now see uh, a ground defense fire firing at the ships. Well, more so the kamikaze boats as they make their way in. And we see what seems to be some kind of a large explosion that happened right in front of this kamikaze boat. And we can now see that they found the Coast Guard patrol boats and that they're going to ram right into the side, destroying them. And we can see that in this clip right here, a critical detonation on one of the Coast Guard vessels as the next drone moves in for its next attack. With that, that's the end of that clip, but still showing that the Ukrainian uh, drone forces are still causing serious damage to Russian naval assets within the area, and once again greatly reducing Russia's blue water and brown water abilities as the Navy continues to be attrited further and further throughout the course of this war. Not only that, but we also got some major news that last night a sabotage attack occurred within the area of the city of Moscow, setting fire to the former Toros plant in the area of northeastern Moscow. We were able to hear that 4,000 square meters, or around approximately uh, four to 16,000 square feet of building has caught on fire within this area. We see this Russian helicopter dropping a bucket of water on the fire. But even that's not really doing much. Also, by the way, completely disregard the square foot metric. That was way off. I was trying to say meters. That's not foot. That, that It was supposed to be meters. But anyways, moving on from that, we also got to hear official confirmation from the Russians that they believe that French forces are going to be moving into Ukraine incredibly soon. That was according to the Russian Foreign Ministry spokeswoman, uh, and she stated that it has been confirmed that French forces will be moving into Ukraine or are already in Ukraine at this moment. Although you can generally disregard Russian statements on that sort of stuff as being uh, hearsay because they usually just say whatever they want. Like, for example, last night, they said that when the explosions happened in Kerch, that they were able to successfully intercept all of the attack missiles that have been fired at the port, and the only damage that was sustained was from falling debris. And we can now see that that's clearly untrue today, as there are massive holes inside of these ships showing that the attack hit them and knocked them out. But moving on from that and into our next bit of news, we were also able to hear that up in Kyiv, the United States has given a special kind of permission that no one thought would be coming around this soon. The United States, according to sources from the Washington Post, will be allowing Ukraine to use Patriot service-to-air missile systems over Russian territory. Not only that, they will also permit the interception of Russian Air Force aircraft inside of Russian airspace using the F-16 Fighting Falcons that will be provided by multiple countries here within the next few weeks. This is huge news. The Ukrainians not only have the AWACS aircraft, which will give them the ability to look deep inside of Russian airspace as far in as, they, uh, as Voronezh in practicality, 
It will also give them the ability to intercept any aircraft that they see operating near the border area and destroy them. Not only that, it will also allow them to conduct SEED operations, which are anti-radar missions against Russian surface-to-air missile sites inside of the Russian Federation, further knocking out any remaining air defense that the Russians have, and not only that, allowing them to be able to conduct more anti-air operations or air superiority missions within the area of the Russian Federation. All of this is absolutely massive news. But at the same time, we have heard that the United States has stated some concern about Ukraine strikes on over-the-horizon early warning radar systems within the area of southern Russia, near to Orenburg and also Armavir in the southern area of Krasnodar Oblast. According to the information that we have, they are extremely concerned about the two attacks recently conducted by the Ukrainian armed forces that attempted to strike the nuclear Russian, uh, well, the Russian nuclear over-the-horizon early warning radar sites along the southern border of the country. With an attack by Ukrainian one-way suicide drones on an early warning site near the town of Armavir in the Krasnodar Krai region, believed to have caused damage to a radar system. As not only believed, it is known that it caused damage to the radar system. While another attack on an early warning site near the city of Orsk along the Russian border of, with Kazakhstan, which is over 1,100 miles from Ukraine, is believed to have failed. The U.S. officials state that, uh, that these sites have no involvement with the Russian war in Ukraine, and the attacks on them could dangerously unsettle the Russian government, who may see this as an attempt at blinding them to a Western nuclear attack, which is something that we've talked about in the past on this channel, because we don't really know that these things have a direct impact on the war in Ukraine. They are both southerly facing, looking away from Ukraine, and have absolutely no ability to detect or see any kind of air targets or any kind of action that is occurring over the skies of Ukraine. But nevertheless, the Ukrainians did attack both of them. We understand that they did cause serious damage and knocked out the arm of your station, and we also understand that some kind of a hit happened near to the one at Orenburg, but we don't really know what happened near Orenburg for certain. We just know that it was possibly attacked. But with that, that is all of the major breaking news that we have today. I've got to thank every single one of y'all so much once again for watching. If y'all did enjoy, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and support us on Patreon, link in the description below. It helps to make these kinds of video projects possible, and I have to give a massive shout out to all of our patrons who are currently supporting this channel and helping us to keep this thing running, because they make video projects like these possible. And so with that, I thank you all so much once again for watching, and I will see you all in the next